Okay, continuing our pin and pin dimple series, mini series with the locks that arrived today. Uh, we have the Degard High Security. The last one was the Kennard High Security. And this one, unlike the Kennard, the Kennard had a uh, warding to it. The Degard just has a flat key. Um, but unlike the Kennard, the DeGuard here introduces some security pins. So I believe that there are probably some spooled outers in there. There might be some torpedo uh, inner pins. And there is an, an inter, uh, there's an interactive element as well. Let's see. This guy here, I think. Yep. So um, this little piece in the cylinder, it moves like that, which means that sometimes that might be a particularly high set pin um, that we might encounter or something like that. So let's see, we'll go ahead, same kind of approach as the Kennard. We will um, do the, try to stay on just the outers and try not to lift the inners. But if you do, you might, you can probably drop them down. If they are uh, torpedo pins on the inners, you, they might get stuck. So you might have to manually counter rotate a little to drop those. So um, the first one's springy in any case. I think that one's the interactive pin. Uh, the second one is binding. How high does this guy want to go? All right. Oh, I got a little uh, a plug rotation when I got that one up. Three is hard to get under. So let off tension a little just so I can get my pick under there. And it's giving me counter rotation. See that? So I did drop a little bit into a little false set. So it must be like a spool on the third one, maybe the first one and fourth one. So a little bit of counter rotation there and drop back down into our false set. Same thing with pin four, a little bit of counter rotation there. So lift that up. All right, drop back into a little bit of a false set. Now, does that mean the first one? No, first one's not ready. So it must be now inner pins or something. So let's uh, see if we can find some inner pins. A little tiny click from the inner pin on three. Inner pin on four feels like it's on the ground. Um, all right, feels, oh, there we go. I was gonna say, about to say, this flag doesn't feel like it could get into the inside. Uh, of pin four to lift that inner further. I was about to switch picks, but then it, it went. Um, at this point, the first pin outer is binding. So that's the interactive element, I think. So I'm lifting it up and it went up way high up in there. And then we dropped, so it went high. It was a spool, so it was giving me counter rotation. And when I got it, the thing dropped back down just a little bit. So now let's see, um, let's check the inners again somewhere. So two, three, Four. I'm thinking it'd be the inner on one because I already went through the other guys. So let's see if I can find the inner pin. Oh, I see something actually. I see something in the keyway hanging down here. It must be hanging out of number one. I'm gonna go from the left. Okay, maybe. Remember what I was saying? Like, if you overset an inner during this process, you can let off a little bit. And I heard a lot of the little inner pins fall down. Actually, I see the outer of pin one fell down. So maybe I had that a little overset. If your key pin falls down, but your driver pin stays up, that's that's fine. That's what you want. So let's uh, feel again if we drop some inner pin. All right, so this, I think, is pin three's inner. Lift up on that. We got a little click and a little bit of rotation. Pin four's inner, I feel, I think. And again, I'm having that problem where I can't. Oh, and really deep false set now. I was about to say I couldn't get inside the pin four, but I, I managed. And let's see, pin one's inner feels like it's, or no, it's, no, yeah, it's pin pin one's inner. No, pin two. What is holding us up now? Pin one's inner. I feel it kind of going up hard for me to stay on it. This might be a point where you switch to regular pick to get it up there, but it's not, not, not seeming to go. I'm trying to get on it from the other side. So we can already see compared to the Kennard, this one introduces a lot more um, element of difficulty. I'm wondering if I need a skinnier pick to get up in there. Oh no, pin two. So pin two inner needed a little bit of lift and we're open. On the plus side, the pick didn't get stuck inside the lock like it did with the Kennard. So 
that is open there. You can see. I don't know if I showed the key in action, but there it is. Let's go ahead and I haven't gutted this one yet, so we'll get to see what's inside together. Give us some focus. All right. Again, it has two screws. Okay. Not easily enough, so that's good. Um, this is uh, the one inch, so it only has four pins. Like I said, if you want five pins in there, just get a little bit longer one, like the one and a quarter, I think. Uh, we need a follower and a key. All right, that one doesn't shoot out the backside like the Kenard did. Uh, shim, if it's your first time gutting lock, I'm just being lazy. Okay. So let's start pin, let's take this key out. Pin one, two, oh, two's the inner pin just fell out. See which way that goes like that. Pin two, please. Doesn't like to come out. Three. There's three and four. All right, nothing special in the plug by look. Oh, you can, let me see, can you see that down there? Inside there's a, there's that interactive element that is a little sprung, like a little sprung pin. And what that's gonna do is that gonna push up, that's gonna push up on this interactive element of this key like this, pushes up on it, and that will make that interactive element extend beyond the surface of the key thus being able to lift the top pin higher than a f the top of a key normally would be able to do because it pushes it up a little bit further. Oh, there's grease in here. All right, so that's the, um, let's see if I have a small tweezer, pull out some of these inner pins. Oh, that's a long one. These inner pins. Oh, interesting. So that first one has like a straight up brass color pin. All right, let's look at some of the um, top pins. Let's get the other tweezers for this. Top pin one. And this, you can see it has this spool shape to it. So that gives you the counter rotation because you got to get over that, that second lip. As you push this pin up, you got to get over that second lip like that. And let's see, do I have this right way? Yeah. So if you push down there, it doesn't spring this spring so this side has to face the key pin if you drop them or flip them around or anything like that. Long spring, two, three, oof, come on, get off there, oof, almost lost the spring. And the last one, four. So again, only a four pin lock. Get the longer one if you want more pins. I should have got the longer one. It costs only a couple extra bucks. Um, but fairly inexpensive uh, and uh, a decent little bit of challenge. It looks like, okay, we'll go in and take a look at the, uh, the pins here. So the second driver pin you see is standard, whereas the other ones are spooled. And the reason this one's standard is if they were all spooled, um, the moment you put any tension on there, you'd drop into a false set because all of the shear line would be dropping into all these spools, right? And then if it's in a false set, you won't be able to get your key in because uh, the they wouldn't be free to travel up and down to let the key, you know, ride up, let the pins ride up and down on the on the on the key. So they need to make sure that the plug is straight in there when they put the key in. And in order to do that, they have to have a standard pin in here and then this plug won't rotate at all when it's locked right so that's why you have at least one standard in there i don't know why this one is looking like brass and these are all steel or they're coated brass um, brass coated in zinc or something um, they could be steel but i don't know why this one is not and it looks like a little serration on there but i 
that's not. It's just like a little where the pin rests, I guess, when the when the when you're at rest when it's locked. Anyway, that is the Degard High Security, uh, one inch with four pins. Thanks. Uh, bye.